I'd been thinking about buying one of these Freeview uh, digital recorders for some time now and uh, the idea is ultimately to replace the My Skybox which I've had for many years because basically I tend to watch the BBC, not surprisingly, on the internet and the only programs I watch from New Zealand are the local ones which are free. It retails at around about the $400 mark, New Zealand dollars that is. You can get these from places like Warehouse, quite often advertised at 20 to 25 percent off. Today I was having a look through the local suppliers on the internet and I came across this advertisement from Noel Leeming and they got it for $249.99 and nine flybys. Whoa! By contrast, I mentioned earlier on that Warehouse also has these. Their price at the moment is not very good. Um, they're offering it at $359, which is a saving of $90, which again ends today. Anyway, I didn't buy it from Warehouse. A, because they didn't have them in stock anyway. Serves them right for having too high a price. So we'll do a live review and see what we get. I haven't even opened the box. I've just literally come from no leaming. So you, your guess is as good as mine what we're going to find. And here we go. Well, it's much smaller than I thought it would be. Let's get all the stuff out first. see what we've got. The usual remote control, power supply, mains lead. So we get it out of its placky bag. I think it's going to be one of those that you destroy when you take it apart. Complete with many fingerprints straight from the manufacturer. My Freeview Plus, as opposed to a My Sky. Now, the preview, uh, the Freeview Plus, relates to the fact that you can connect this to the internet. Oh, it's even got Wi-Fi. I'm even more impressed now. What else have we got? HDMI, which is important because this, by the way, is terrestrial. It comes for the UHF plug and feed through. And it's the only box in New Zealand on the Freeview side that will give you true HD 1080p. It could be I, I'm not sure, but um, it's 1080 whatever it is, which is true HD. Unlike the satellite version of this, which is not HD. It, on the box it does say 1080, but that is upscale because it's only standard definition. That is transmitted on Freeview satellite. It has a, a one terabyte disk inside which will give quite a bit of playtime. Now here's an interesting thing. There's a little label on here saying warranty invalid if this tag is removed. But some idiot hasn't realized that to get rid of this protective plastic I'm now going to have to remove that label. What kind of idiot has designed that? I hope this isn't a sign of things to come. Now as per usual, getting this stuff off is proving to be a nightmare in itself. But we shall persevere and I won't bore you with watching me do it. Now here's another rather annoying thing. To get the best results from this you need an HDMI because that's where you get your high definition from. So what do they give you? A stupid bloody analog output and composite video lead. What type people honestly? I suppose I should be glad that I've got two batteries for the remote. Well the batteries are two triple A's and they go in here very nicely in the bottom and I must say the remote 
is rather nice. It's got a nice sort of matte, like an almost furry feel to it. And um, it does hold rather well and it does have a good range of well laid out buttons on it. Quite a nice looking remote I think to add to the thousands that I already have. Well I've just plugged the unit in and this is what's popped up on the screen. Now the first thing I'm going to have to do is to change this to New Zealand. Ah, oh, there we go. Bear in mind at this stage I haven't looked at the instruction manual. I'm just using fairly common logic. I've just got an aerial plugged into the antenna input and power and an HDMI connected directly to the TV. So we're now going to press OK. And the remote seems quite directional. I've actually got to point it there. So I've done that. Press OK, which I've done. And now we've got to go to next. Um, we will say we are wireless. Well, it's actually going quicker than I thought. It's now finding some channels. Right, well, so I haven't done anything else, and we're now watching live free view. I better turn the sound down just in case YouTube gets overexcited. And that's without any adjustments or anything at all. That happens to be TV1 in New Zealand, and, and that's just off the front of the screen so without any ado it all looks pretty good i've just had a look at the manual by the way <laughs> such as it is i'll stand over here and show you this piece of paper is the manual um, almost completely useless and not what i expected at all but never mind if they can't even give you an hdmi lead what can you expect other than a manual. Right, as you probably know if you're a resident of New Zealand, there aren't millions of programs available on Freeview, but just a quick flick through them. This is TV2, and you can see it responds relatively quickly. That's TV3, Channel 4, Mari TV. Needless to say, I don't watch a load of that mainly because I can't speak Māori. TV One Plus, one hour. So if you've missed it on once, the only thing is, the plus channels are standard definition. Only TV One, Two and Three is actually in full HD in this country, which is very sad. Now this should look a bit better now because I've actually closed the curtains. We've got so much light coming in from outside and you don't see a reflection of me in my shorts here which is not good for anybody now apart from all the that isn't by the way all washed out like his face looks on here it's it's because i've got the camera on auto at the moment um, but it actually does look quite good now along with the normal broadcast channels we're starting to get a deluge of shopping channels for morons that have got nothing better to do than sit in front of a tv all day watching adverts but now we're beginning to get all this religious rubbish so this is one of them. Um, it's worth a laugh though. Um, and then the other things we've got, we've got Chinese TV, um, which is not a lot of use to me. And another Chinese TV. Now this is an Indian channel. I, I, I hope I'm right, it's Bollywood. Now this specializes in showing everything in the wrong ratio with distorted sound and an absolutely atrocious picture quality. But, um, well, I feel sorry for the people that are, have to watch it, but there you go. It's available. Let's see what happens when it gets to 100%. I wonder what it's going to upgrade in. Warning! Flash program. Whoa! This is the EPG program guide of TV3. And um, I need to move it slightly over. I must oil this stand. It's driving me mad. 
Now, if you want to record something, let's say I want to record the next item down. We go on there, and if you look on the bottom, it says record. We press the red button on the remote, so I will do that now. Would you like to record the whole series? No. I don't really even want to record this. Now you have to go by the coloured buttons on this, so I'll press the blue button. No. And it's now come up with a little R in brackets to record it. And it's picked up where I left off yesterday. And the picture has no noticeable difference in quality. So from that point of view, um, it all seems to, to work quite well. I haven't tried a series record yet or anything like that. But um, I don't have any reason to su suppose it won't work. It's day four now since I've purchased this um, Freeview machine and I thought I would summarise what I think of it. Now, picture quality is very good. Cannot fault the picture quality at all, both in standard definition and also in HD. On the downside, whilst I initially thought the remote control was good and in terms of feel and look it is very good can't fault that at all but it is incredibly directional well when I say directional I don't know whether it's the receiver that doesn't have a wide um, view range or whether it's the transmitter or the um, infrared or yes it would be infrared diode on here which doesn't have a wide enough angle. If you compare it with any of the other remotes I can sit anywhere in the room and zap the TV, zap the Onkyo or the Sky, Skybox. But this thing I have to hold it out like this and point it virtually directly at the machine and I find it really useless. So if you're the manufacturer or the distributor of these things sort it out because it's crap. The other thing that's crap as I pointed out in the early part of the video is the fact they give you an analog cable which probably costs the same as a standard 1.5 meter um, HDMI. So why they give you this cable you might as well not give it to us and just give us the three dollar refund. But still that's it. Um, other than that, the only other query that um, is irritating is on the record and playback function. Now, I've bought this primarily because I don't like the fact that New Zealand TV, and to be fair, most of the world, is supported by advertisements, and often there's 15 minutes of advertisements in every hour, which... I just don't want to see because if you're watching say three or four hours TV on an evening for example you'd be watching 60 minutes of adverts now I'm 66 years old an hour out of my life is a long time now some people say that the adverts are better than the programs well in that case you're watching the wrong bloody programs because the adverts are not better. They are mindless crap. Anyway, that's my little rant. So the purpose of this is that I want to be able to skip past the adverts. Now, to do that is quite easy. You just literally press one button. I'll show you a close up of this in a second and it bypasses it and you press another button to stop it. Now the problem is, most of the people I know would also do exactly the same thing. But it's hidden right down here. Well, it's not hidden, but it's it, these little buttons here. Now as it's a prime function, or one of the main reasons why you'd buy a machine with a hard drive on it, is that you can zap the programs and bypass the adverts. But this you have to physically, and bearing in mind if you're watching seriously, the room will be fairly subdued brightness. 
So you have to fumble about to find out which button to press. And when you, bearing in mind that it's not very, um, it doesn't work very well, you're ending up going like this, waving your arms about and pressing the same button half a dozen times to, to, to get this to work and it's really annoying. So there should be two bigger buttons on here for this purpose that you just press once and also it goes through so many steps one times one and a half times two times five whereas really a sensible speed is about times 12 because you can see what's going on and you can stop it quick enough that you don't have to then back up and um, find the beginning of the program again so manufacturers if you're listening two big buttons one marked play to resume your thing and one is a one-stop click times 12 that you can do this business with right here we have the close-up of the remote and this is the button you have to press maybe three times to get to mine uh, uh, fast forward times 10 and then you have to press this button briefly to get the picture back on now I think those two buttons should be bigger all these other ones along here are things you only use very occasionally but those two need to be big a similar sort of size to these here so in a nutshell pretty good product really those couple of niggly things that really seriously need sorting out it runs moderately cool and when you switch it off it is well off it's just on the standby mode and it it's, doesn't get warm at all as for price I think if you paid 449 for it you'd be a fool and there's plenty of opportunities providing you don't want it the very next day you should be out of it and for the price I paid for it 249 I would say it's excellent value for money one terabyte hard drive which is pretty good and more than adequate for any applications that I can envisage anyway that's the end of this video so if you like what you've seen go out and buy one I think I'll stick with my skybox, however. Bye.